Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Baseball Podcast. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and today we're going to give you what you want. 30 breakouts for 30 teams, one player on every major league team that we think has the potential, at least. We're not saying they're going to break out, but the potential's there. Just like once upon a time, there was potential for myself and the Welsh to do great things. Uh, And then... We did because we're here oh. doing Fantasy Pros MLB. You see, the Welsh thought I was going to go negative on that. I, was I like, didn't. What happened? The potential what, was what there. What happened to us? And we delivered. We look at us. Eighteen thousand subscribers on the channel. Leading off live starting Thursday at twelve thirty Eastern. We're back again live. Join us here on the show. Make sure you ring the bell for notifications so you know every time the show is beginning. And Welsh, speaking of uh, getting off to a hot start, we will be wigging out. On opening day, my wig yeah. has arrived. You have not purchased yours yet. Time is ticking, buddy. You better get on that. No, I got it. I've, I've been. I've actually been window shopping for the last two days. I, a little indifferent. I'm a little bit. Di- I want the perfect wig. Uh, I've seen a preview of Joe's. Uh, I will be ordering today, and I'm excited. My my wife yesterday also. You can see I've got the scraggly beard. I don't grow in beards great, and probably why I don't have them going usually. And she goes, "When is that going away again?" And I said. Thursday after leading off and the mustache show, the mustache wig show. I think though, I think the beard looks great. We've been yeah, through like this. It, so. uh, I don't think it's scraggly at all. I think it's tremendous. Everyone support Welsh's beard in the comments, please. It needs some help. Oh and yeah. Also, if I get like, if I get like hundreds of comments, I'll just like print it out and I'll screenshot them and show my wife and say, Hey, listen, you're overruled. Sorry. She'll, yeah, she'll take that really well too. By a bunch of strangers uh, yeah, who, yeah. <laughs> who pretend to like, by the way, got recognized from the show last night, uh, just like you have. It's oh, it's funny our fantasy pro stuff really uh, you know we're, we're a big deal I didn't realize and and by the way we we appreciate all the support from our fan base and of course we always do and speaking of support we're here to support you in season with my playbook so don't forget about it if you haven't synced your league if you're like I'm a hot shot I can draft I can do everything myself okay cool but you can't do everything yourself when you're managing all your teams so if you want personalized advice for every single league you're in sync all of your leagues whether it's one league or 20 leagues it doesn't matter we connect to everything at fantasy pros and it's for free you're going to get personalized league dashboards every single day there uh you can get all the player injury news for all of your teams you can see how many shares of certain players you have daily weekly optimal lineups are in there the best free agent advice you can find not to mention you can see all the free agents in all of those respective leagues you can set all your lineups from one spot my playbook for fantasy pros is the thing you need. So go to fantasypros.com slash MLB, my playbook, or just download the app. That's the way the kids like to do it and mm-hmm. get your teams again, synced for free. It's going to be life changing. I'm telling you, it has been for me. I love it. I use it all the time. It's the best big announcement to the winner of the trophy smack ultimate fantasy baseball championship belt is Dave Berry. So Dave Berry, get in touch with us at customer support over at mailbag at fantasypros.com with your mailing address and proof of your subscription to Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel. And we'll get that shipped out to you right away. Again, Dave Berry, congrats. You're the big winner. So what are we giving away next? We'll tell you in honor of opening day, we want to give you the chance to elevate your victory to legendary status with the Trophy Smack 36-inch Fantasy Baseball Championship Trophy. That's right. It isn't just a trophy. It's a towering symbol of your fantasy baseball dominance. That's doesn't get better than that, folks. To enter, all you need to do is simply subscribe to Fancy Bros MLB YouTube channel, leave a comment below on any video, and that's your ticket to possibly claiming this extraordinary symbol of fantasy baseball supremacy. Stay in the loop, turn on your notifications for the latest updates, and don't miss out on the exclusive chance to win this incredible fantasy trophy and elevate your victory to, again, dominant towering symbols. That's what you want to do here over at Fantasy Bros MLB with Trophy Smack. Welsh, let's talk about some of the best, too. Let's talk about some of these players on each team. So Welsh and I are going to go through division by division. We've given each other different divisions to do. Uh, I took the National League. Welsh took the American League here, and we're going to go through. So, Welsh, why don't you start and kick things off with the American League East, East, the East, the EST of the American League. That's what we want to do. So the AL East, that's what I want from you. Give me the breakouts potentially from each team that you might see on the horizon in 24. Ale East. I got the, the Ale East for I like you. I got... The East is good. It's <laughs> nice. Like I like I got five players. Five players for you. I'll run them through. Starting with the Baltimore Orioles. Breakout player. Well, Kobe Mayo. Kobe Mayo almost could actually make it, by the way. I say almost. But at this moment, has not made the team. And the team said... 
well, if Jackson Holiday makes it, he doesn't. But that is also pretty positive words of a guy that has had a tremendous spring. 326 average, a homer, a stolen base, his big dude, not striking out a bunch, double-digit walks. Again, these are spring numbers, but he had 54 plate appearances. He has shown that he deserves to be out there, and he may. I don't know if Jordan Westberg is going to keep him off of uh, third base. He's going to be coming up some point this year and has a real, real chance to be a big breakout player for the Baltimore Orioles. So... He is my choice, even though he might not be on the active roster. We've actually talked about this guy a decent amount. Kind of hard to find some New York Yankees that might be breakouts. But if you want to talk broken. about one of the big... Broken. You can find some broken Yankees. Uh, <laughs> There's plenty of broken. There's plenty of broken Rotation, Yankees. Breakouts. Actual mm. on the field players. Um, this is probably one of the bigger names of anybody that I chose. But we're going with Anthony Volpe because I do think that Anthony Volpe's got an opportunity to really improve that batting average this year. And with the stuff going on with DJ LeMay, you may see him in a leadoff spot. And if he could somehow, somehow get higher in the lineup, big things could change. He's been my guy for a while because I really do think he can go 30-30, and I just kind of get sad when I miss out on him. So he's an easy breakout for the New York Yankees. Going over to Toronto, this is actually another team that kind of struggles if you're trying to pick, like, who's a player that's going to break out? There's a lot of, like, guys that we know. It's the Bo Bichettes. It's the Vlad Guerreros. And there's, like, players that we're not super interested, you know, like Alec Manoa. That's not going to happen. So I'm going to go kind of the similar Kobe Mayo route. Ricky Tiedemann. Has also not made the roster, but this is another player that has had a great spring, consistently pumping 98. I saw a ton of him in the AFL. Now, the thing that has stood out to me, when he was here, I didn't realize maybe how much he was nursing this little arm issue that was going on because he would sit 94 and touch 96 occasionally and everything else looked amazing. And I was like, I don't know. He's up 98, 99, hitting it consistently in games. They've got injuries. Alec Manoa stinks. So, and Ricky Tate and is hurt. Ricky Tiedemann could break camp with this team. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets 100 innings with this team. And he's a guy that you would want. You're going to want those innings when it happens. So break out Ricky Tiedemann. Moving over to Tampa Bay. This is actually a super weird one because this is not like a young guy. This is a guy that's been around before. But I will tell you, he's actually never broke out. And he was one of LOL, the first players I ever really talked about on uh, Fantasy Pros when I got brought on because, boy, did I think he could have a 2020 season. I'm talking about Ahmed Rosario. That is a fantasy breakout for you guys because Ahmed Rosario looks like he is going to get that gig. He jumped into a situation we all thought Jose Caballero was going to take. He can hold this down the entire season. Yes, it could be trade deadline and Carson Williams can come up, but... His being up has no effect on a guy like Junior Caminero. He's been hitting for some power. He can run a little bit. Ahmed Rosario is a great fantasy breakout this year because he's just absolutely free. And then finally, my last one in the AL East going to the Boston Red Sox. This has been one of my favorite players. Call it whatever the, whatever you want. Sleeper, must have, uh, a guy on all my roster or breakouts here. Sedani Rafaela with the Boston Red Sox. I love this kid. Now, I do love quite a few players on this team. I talk about Jaron Duran a lot. He's kind of been my consistent sleeper player. But Rafaela looks like he's going to be able to man down that center field gig. If he doesn't, here's the other thing. He's going to be playing on some of the infield. They like him at short. They like him at second. Von Grissom is going to miss time early on. He may take that spot. He's a power speed combo, explosive bat, just mm -hmm. real good, just really, really good bat speed overall. Offensive game, I think, could go through the roof. And he's going to have multi position eligibility. And he's free. He's absolutely free. So Sedani Rafaela is my breakout with the Boston Red Sox. And that is the AL East breakout. I'll tell you what, I think Volpe's going to move up sooner than you think. Uh, DJ LeMayhew has not had a good spring. Let's just all be honest about that. So I know a lot of people think, hey, you know, move back to the top of the order. Things can work out for him. Look, if you put Anthony Volpe in front of Juan Soto and, and Aaron Judge, good things are going to happen for that kid. Just pull the Band-Aid off. Just do it. Uh, and Senadine Rafaela is the guy that uh, I want to highlight here of this group, really, because I've watched more and more of him. It's a prospect I was less familiar with, you know, in the throes of NFL season. It takes me a little while to catch up on some of the prospects, but Welsh turned me on to him a couple weeks ago, and I've been watching him in spring. I've been watching the highlights from last year. He's got incredible uh, quick hands, hits everything hard to the opposite field too, which 
Uh, we kind of were talking about before the show that shows you this is a player that is waiting on the baseball a player that, you know, is really seeing the baseball well and, and getting a good look at it. And again, driving the ball with authority to the opposite field, not just for home runs, but I'm talking about like hard hit rates up the yin yang there. And this is a player because of the versatility, he's going to find his way into the lineup, had a good spring. To me, this is another guy too. You want to call him a breakout, a sleeper, whatever you want to call him. I don't care. Just yeah. call him on Joe's roster. That's, Especially that's if you're going through and you're targeting any of the players for this team. Uh, just pointing out again, he had 20 homers last year in the minors, almost 40 stolen bases. And then he comes to the majors, a couple more homers, a mm-hmm. couple more stolen bases. And then this spring, three homers in spring, couple stolen bases again. Rafaela, if given the opportunity, really ready to have a big breakout. And he has done it pretty consistently from a counting stat perspective throughout the minors. And I'm looking forward to it this year. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get to the National League East here. Start with the Atlanta Braves. A.J. smith uh starting pitcher. Again, not going to be a guy in April necessarily for this team. But uh, I do believe at some point in time you are going to see this kid. Uh, he's got the fastball you need. He is a brave starting pitching prospect. I don't know, you know, how much more we need from that because, I mean, we always seem to uh, get these guys who pop every single time. Uh, I'm looking at this player as going to, at some point, I think he's going to make 15 starts for the Braves this year at some point. I don't know if you agree with that number or not, but I think that number is enough where he has potential to be a breakout star. And it's hard with Atlanta because most of these guys already are kind of planted in their spots. Maybe some of the outfield of Kalanick, you know, struggles. Someone's going to come out there and have a breakout potentially. That's possible, but I think in the pitching staff, you're always going to see injuries. It's just a part of, you know, the nature of this game. smith is going to get his potential, and again, another guy who looked good this spring. Christopher Sanchez with the Phillies is another pitcher that I'd be looking for. A lot of pitchers in this list here in the National League East. Uh, Sanchez, again, this was a tougher one for me also because um, – a good pitcher. I think there's potential for a breakout, but I'm not holding my breath for it, but I think he's the best candidate because he is going to be locked into that rotation. And the Phillies, I do think if they could ever just get off to a good start, could really put themselves in the driver's seat for this division. I I really do. As good as the Braves are, I look at the Phillies and every year the Phillies just get red hot towards the end, but they struggle in the first half. Just put it together in the first half, Phillies. And if so, Sanchez has a chance to I think win double digit games here for this team, even as a fifth starter. Uh, the next one is a name you're probably not very familiar with, with the New York Mets. It's Jose Buto. And Buto is a pitcher that last year messed around a little bit. All of a sudden seemed to have clicked in terms of his aggressiveness. I watched the spring start of his Welsh and I could not believe the pace in which this guy worked, the way he's pounding the strike zone. I don't know if you got to see any of him or any clips of him, but um, whatever he did last year in terms of tweaking some of those um, pitches of his, tweaking his demeanor on the mound, whatever it might be. This is a guy that works fast. This is a guy that is aggressive in the strike zone. Those kind of pitchers tend to have good major league success. The Mets rotation has all sorts of problems in it. Buto at some point is going to make starts for the Mets. Again, I don't know if I believe in McGill wholeheartedly. I know I've talked about him before. He's had some flashes from time to time, but this kid looks like a real presence on the mound. Totally different, pounding the strike zone. I'm very excited about this guy, so much so that in 15-team leagues, I'm already adding him (laughs) already in waivers. I didn't draft him because I knew I didn't have to, but instead I wanted to IL other guys that I knew I was going to draft and pick up this kid because sooner or later he's going to make starts and good ones for the New York Mets. Max Meyer, a pitcher that we both loved going into uh, previous seasons. Unfortunately, injuries kind of were his undoing, but Max Meyer is another guy. I look at this Marlins rotation. He's going to have those opportunities. Max Meyer at one point was the best pitching prospect in this system, and I feel like everyone's forgotten about him. I haven't. You haven't. I've talked to Craig Mish, who's going to be on our betting pro show next week. We're doing our MLB preview, so don't miss that on the betting pros next Wednesday. That show is going to be recorded. Meyer here, he said, like, he is back. He is ready to go. He is ready to make an impact in the major leagues this season. So even though he got sent down, don't freak out. By the time we get to Memorial Day, I think this kid's going to be up. And James Wood having a terrific spring, hitting baseballs a mile long. This was the big piece that came back for them in that Soto trade. And I'm looking there at James Wood being a guy that is going to possibly be their new star, the guy that they build around. Uh, As much as, you know, Lane Thomas is fun and C.J. Abrams has a lot of potential, James Wood is the middle of the order guy. So Wood is that guy for me that I don't think it's going to take very long. I think he's going to have a month or two at AAA. And then after that, you're going to see him up in the big leagues. And it's only a matter of time before those moonshots get to the major leagues. Welsh, what do you think about these five names? Who stands out to you? 
Uh, the one that really, really gets me excited is Christopher Sanchez. And I think this is a really great breakout call. And yeah, you know, he's been kind of a favorite of quite a few people as far as drafting because he goes so late. I love decent strikeout, low walk guys because I think the floor really kind of uh, raises up. So you just know that this guy might not blow up. This is one of those guys that feels like a very streamable type of pitcher that might be someone that you can't afford to drop in season. 4% walk rate last year. 24% K rate. He had an over 40% whiff rate on his changeup. And he throws all three, uh, the you know sinker fastball, changeup, and slider. Those are his big three combo pitches. So he's not a two-pitch pitcher. He's throwing all three at you 20% or more of the time and huge whiff rate on the changeup, almost 30% whiff rate on the slider, low walks, and a great rotation. And looks like he's going to have that for the majority of the year. I really love the Christopher Sanchez call. I love the Max uh, Mayer call. My only weird thing with him is just coming off of Tommy John and what will they allow him to do, especially as their pitchers are just dropping like flies. Well, um, and that's the thing. They're Sanchez dropping like flies guy, already, like Yuri Perez doing with an injury. Like, it's just... It's the nature of of the Marlins because they have this you know younger pitching staff because they're a team that always has to you know they're not signing big free agent pitchers coming in so the pitching staff is always going to be on the younger side it's always going to be guys in their twenties not their thirties unless it's a retread guy uh, Buto is the one guy too I don't know if you got to see him yet Welsh but if you haven't check him out ten innings this year in the um, spring training nine strikeouts two walks he's got a WHIP at one point one zero. He has just been terrific so far. Uh, and last year, he did, you know, make a few appearances for the New York Mets in the big club. Had a 3-6-4 ERA over 42 innings, 38 strikeouts. I did walk too many guys there. That's the trouble. He's got to cut down that walk rate. But some good adjustments in 2023 that you saw for him. And I think that towards the end of the year last year, you kind of figured it out. And he carried over to the spring and so far not walking people in the spring, which I think is a really good sign. Again, pounding that strike zone. That's what you want young pitchers to do. Uh, AL Central. Uh, let's go to you, Welsh, back to the American League for five breakouts in the Central. All right, we're going to jump over to the Minnesota Twins. This guy's actually been kind of a popular breakout, but Matt Walner. Matt M Walner with just huge hard hit numbers, and that's mm -hmm. what this one's really going to be about. Good barreling, insanely high-end uh, hard hit numbers with the opportunity could easily come 30 homers. This It's not out of the realm of possibility if he is given that. Going across the board, there's a lot of... Uh, Edward Julian is a player that I think obviously is going to kind of break out, uh, but going a little bit deeper, going with Matt Walner, because it does look like he's going to be given that shot, though they do have, you know, quite a few good bench utility ish type of players that can move around. Willie Castro is someone that could take away from it, but I'm going to go with Matt Walner for this going over to the guardians. Here's one of my favorites. And I've been talking about him the day one of the AFL plenty of time before, but he said this, I was actually just on a show the other day. And I think it was uh, Tim Kanak who writes here. Tim had said, when I think of Chase DeLauder, I think of you because of your gushing about him in the AFL. Because I said like three days in, I'm like, this is the best player here. And he's a major league player. And I think the world is kind of being introduced to Chase DeLauder in a bigger scope because I'm not, not many players have been hotter in spring. I know it's spring numbers, no. but he has a higher walk rate than strikeout rate in spring. He's hitting over 500. He has four homers, 10 RBIs. He's a thousand on slugging a team. right now. Looking at the numbers. It's it, crazy, dude. Yeah. This is on a team that needs more power bats. It's just a bunch of contact guys. Outfield, holding guys like Will Brennan. It just, I don't know. I can't do it. They, they are, they are going to put uh, Esteban Floriel, former New York Yankee, in that outfield, or they're talking about it over Delauder. No, I don't think so. Delauder has some of the best plate presence out there. He's not going to strike out tons. He, can, he gets on base. He can run. Delauder is ready for a breakout. And it looks like, even though he hadn't really played uh, higher levels and missed a lot of time last year, this could be someone that they push. And I think he's in for a breakout because this spring has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, number three, or going over to the Kansas City Royals here, Michael uh, Garcia. Boy, whatever reason, I always just want to call him Michael Franco. Remember him, third base? Oh, I, well, I remember him well. I mean, how many times did we think, okay, this will be the Michael Franco year? I think he was this Mr. Spring, by the way. I think Michael Franco, if I remember, like every spring would have like seven homers and hit 500. Franco and, was his own worst enemy. It was a guy who really yeah. just never, I don't think, put the work in to be as good. It's Yoan Moncada syndrome, too. Like some guys are just their worst enemy. I don't, I didn't, yeah. And I learned this. This is why you like, it's nice to have MLB insider friends because years ago, 
a birdie told me, yo, Mancata doesn't put the work in for as good as he is. And I was fading him and everybody else was buying him. And I'm very grateful for these. I have these a Mancata story, actually. I'll tell you. Oh, it's an off-air oh, story, though. Oh, oh even I got better. One. Ooh, go. maybe in the Discord Ooh, or something. Mm. Uh, Fantasy Pros uh, Discord. You can check out well, Fantasy I was going to say, maybe it's one for the chat. Discord. We'll be doing some stuff on the Discord. More on that coming soon. So if yeah, you want to get right. extra leading off, uh, Discord might be for you. That's right. Uh, we'll have some uh, singles and doubles over there. So not Mikel Franco, but Michael Garcia with the Kansas City Royals. I actually went to the Royals game the other day, and they put out their starting lineup. It was pretty much everybody. And more confirmation, Garcia was leading off mm-hmm. again. And, you know, he's gotten a little bit bigger. I think there's still some inconsistencies in his game, but he's going to be leading off for the Royals. He already stole 24 bases last year in limited-ish work. I think he's going to be able to go over 30. He's going to steal 10. And he's not free-free, but he's pretty close to what free looks like. 10-man leagues, he's free. 12-man leagues, it's close. 15-mans is just kind of at the back end. Michael Garcia is ready for the big breakout. And this is after stealing like 24 bases in uh, 2023. Going over the Detroit Tigers, this is uh, one I've been talking a bunch about. Parker Meadows, he is another guy that might have some opportunities to be hitting high in the order. 2020 bat. He's going to be manning that outfield. He has power. He also has experience, by the way, leading off. When he was out here in the AFL, he did exclusive leading off. And that's something I saw in Lars Nupar. And sometimes that tells, you know, where teams want a player to be working. And if he gets that opportunity, there's going to be more runs. I'm not saying he will, but if he is to get that opportunity, you're going to have a lot of run opportunities. But either way, he will run. Contact has been pretty solid. Parker Meadows is one of those rare-ish 2020 bats that are going on the back end of a team that I think has a lot of breakouts. I almost put Matt Manning on this because he's had a phenomenal spring with the return flat, uh, fastball velocity. I love Riley Green. Colt Keith is getting an opportunity. But you want to talk about someone that is going to break out. It's Parker Meadows. And then finally, this is the wackiest one. We're going to the Chicago White Sox. The breakout, Michael Kopech. Michael Kopech, who just got put out of the starting rotation and thrown into the bullpen. I was just over at the White Sox, and he gave me the most non-answer ever. I said, Mike, are we going to close? And he goes... I don't know. He's like, I'm just happy to be pitching. And I was like, that's a good, uh, that's a kind of good thought process in general. But if you're going to take Michael Kopak out of any of the potential to be a starter, they've already thrown out the idea that he might close. I do worry that he lacks some of the closing mentality, but here are the guys that he's going up against. Well, considering Jordan, he's like, oh, I don't know. Like, I mean, it, that, that it was more, it wasn't like, it was more like he didn't want to like talk about it with me. I, that I was all that it was. Or maybe but, he just didn't want to talk to you. I get like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. A lot of people do. Uh, Jordan Leisure, John Brebbia. Those are the guys that he's going up against on the closing role. Uh, Prelander Barrow, who I really like, has been injured. I think there's a legit shot that they will want to put him in that role. So I'm drafting him at the back end of drafts. So the breakout is this new Michael Kopech, who's now going to unleash it over one inning, get more aggressive, get the velo up, and maybe he becomes a closer for absolutely nothing. I'm trying to draft him everywhere right now. White Sox are weird. I'm not really sure what you look at with breakouts because they just got a ragtag group and Yoan Moncada and Eloy. But I'm going to say Michael Kopech is the breakout as the new closer and maybe maybe saves 20, 22 games. That might be 22 of the 30 that the White Sox win this year, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, look, I don't love the White Sox, but I mean, that's good news for Drew Thorpe making a lot more starts this year, too, if Kopech goes there, because that's another open spot in that rotation. So that's yeah. another sooner than later. Chase DeLauder is the guy I want to talk about, though, from this grouping. Uh, Welsh, uh, this kid's been red hot in the spring. Uh, also, I assume you saw him in the Arizona Fall League, because in the Fall League, he was also red hot. Hit 299 in the Fall League. Uh, in 2023, 529 slugging. The OPS was at 914. He had five homers, drove in 27 runs. He also stole five bases, too. So in 23 games, five homers, five steals. The Guardians desperately need somebody else in this lineup. And I think that La- Lauder would be that guy. Um, Welsh, do you think that, you know, he is ready for the big leagues, despite the fact, as you mentioned, did miss some time in terms of, like, looking for, you know, a lot of time in double and triple A. The guy doesn't have it. So do you think... He needs more seasoning, or do you think this is a guy? It's like, no, just get him up there to the big leagues and get him going. I think he's just ready. I mean, that, that's what I was saying before. Like, it took me three days in the AFL, and I was like, this looks like the most pro baseball player 
Also, from a skill set standpoint, I'm like, I think he might be the best of all these guys. What What is unique about him is he's one of those guys, He's he doesn't swing at a lot of bad pitches. Uh, sometimes that could be bad for guys where if they get a little too um, picky, Edward Julian is one of those guys, you know, you mm -hmm. get too picky early in the zone, but there's more aggression with Chase DeLauder. So why I think Chase DeLauder can be there now I think you find defensively good base runner, but also it's like the way he approaches at bats. It, this is a good thing. Like he's not going to get fooled into bad situations. He's going to take walks. He's going to drive counts. He's a middle of the order bat right now. You know, baseball uh, trainers and scouts, they could tell me what more he needs to do. It was just missed time. That's why he went to the AFL. But this is a guy that was almost the number one pick in, in the MLB draft before having kind of a down college season and some injury lingering things. Those are behind. He's having an insane spring. And when you put in one hand Estevan Floriel and another hand Chase DeLauder, to me, there's not a conversation. So Chase mm -hmm. DeLauder is easy for the breakout. And I think legit big numbers, especially if he gets back to stealing like we've seen in the AFL. He is a big human being, but he can fly. Great athleticism. The only thing people pick on is he has this short follow through, which is kind of Mike Trout-ish. Mm -hmm. But I think it it what what is so good about it is it lets him cheat because he has such raw power. People are like, I don't think he's going to be a He can. He cheats a little bit, and all he needs is one good barrel, which he can get even on these uh, uh, non-follow-throughs and make the ball absolutely fly. Also in the American League, Welsh, you know, it, you're looking around the pitching landscape right now. Like the A's uh, are the A's, you know, Texas Rangers already kind of, you know, like Scherzer's not going to be there right away. We don't know Gossman's health. Garrett Cole's health is a question. The Detroit, you know, uh, pitching staff after Scooble is young and questionable. Um, he doesn't have to face the guys of his own team, but he's going to face the White Sox. He's going to face the back end of the Orioles rotation. We like some of the pieces in the Red Sox. Like, I'm just looking around. Like, outside of Houston, I mean, the Angels pitching staff leaves, I think, something to be desired. Some, some upside guys there. But outside of the Twins and the Seattle Mariners, like, if you are a young hitter right now in the American League, I think there's every reason to be very encouraged that they're going to be facing a lot of retread guys, quad A guys, young pitchers trying to figure it out. Like, it, I mean, I think the, the National League right now skews as the heavier pitching side of things. That's that's my take on it. I don't know if you agree. But I think that's a good thing for any American League young yeah. hitter this year. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And also, I would say divisionally. I think it's open. You were kind of talking about it. You've got the Royals. Oh, sure. Yeah, they're fine. You've got the White Sox. The Twins probably near the top, but the yeah, Tigers. Twins, like, twins in Seattle, those are the two American League pitching staffs so, anyway. They're like, I don't want to face those guys. <laughs> like, it's so open. Fun. And it you either, you know, uh, pl put these players on a pedestal to end up moving them, like Bieber, like Classe, or you take that you have uptick velo in Bieber. Mm -hmm. You've got one of the better closers who isn't hurt right now, like every other freaking closer. And then you look at this team and you go, you know what? Let's put the best players out there. But so far, they pick Davison De Los Santos over Kyle Manzardo. And if they pick Esteban Florio over DeLauder, I don't love those decisions. But mm. the positive would be is if they win some games early, maybe they turn uh, a little bit later into April once the you know extra year uh, is done and both of those players can be up. And DeLauder's a guy I think could quickly, kind of like a, um, a Wyatt Langford, could be hitting in the middle of that order, not after long. Like, you know, if he came up, let's say April 25th, by May 15th, May 20th, I could see him hitting three or four for the Guardians. All right, let's get to the National League Central names on the breakout list, uh, starting with the Cubs. Who I think have a real chance to win this division is Michael Bush. Uh, it's going to DH, um, you know, maybe move him around the diamond a little bit. But uh, watching Bush, who's a player that you know, Welsh have been very high on, what I like most about him is left-handed power, very quiet swing, very compact. There's not a lot of extra movement in it. So he doesn't – I feel like he's a guy that's not going to get fooled that often. Um, you watch the, the highlights of Bush uh, again, you see the power, you see the, you know, he's hitting moonshots everywhere, uh, looking good this spring too. I think it would behoove Chicago not to have him in the lineup every day. Uh, they could use a little bit more pop there in this lineup, I think, but Bush to me again, very quiet body, quiet lower half. He has that little front turn in of the foot too, that you see like some of those great guys like Pujols used to have that too, where he stays really balanced too. Uh, so there's a lot to like here with Michael Bush, and I do think he's a guy that can hit 25 homers. So if you're looking for power late in your drafts, it's another guy that's relatively free in terms of ADP that I would be drafting. Jordan Walker of the St. Louis Cardinals, a player we were all very excited about last year, but I don't feel like 
you could really call it a breakout season. It was an improved season, a season where there were struggles in the beginning, got sent down, came up, saw a better version of him, but I'm not ready to write him off. So I think there's potential for a breakout here for Jordan Walker, where we could see the best of him. It's easy in Milwaukee. It's Jackson Churio. You know, Deal Hall could have been this guy for me, but, you know, I, I know Welsh still has some questions about how good he might be right out of the gate. I know we had Eric Cross on last week. He kind of mentioned the same thing. I still think there's breakout potential here. He could potentially in the second half, especially really start to get his feet for under him. And I think, you know, when you have young players with big expectations and big contracts, it would not shock me if he got off to a slow start. I don't think he's the kind of guy you send down. I think he's the kind of guy you let him work through the problems and build the confidence. Nick Lodolo, another post hype guy. A couple years ago, we were all very excited about Nick Lodolo. This Reds pitching staff feels a little like, you know, uh, what is it? Holding water in a paper bag. Like it's going to start leaking mm -hmm. at some point. And I want to see if Lodolo can be that patch. Like if that could be the guy lefties sometimes take a lo little bit longer to figure things out. Him and Hunter Green two years ago, two of the most sought after young pitching prospects. And I think everybody's kind of cooled on them. And I think Lodolo has an opportunity to really put it all together this year and make a fair amount of uh, starts this year for the Reds. Again, to me, breakouts about volume as much as it is about talent. I think the talent is there. I think, you know, he's got beaten around a little bit, had some injuries he had to deal with too. A healthy Nick Lodolo refocused, I think a little bit more experienced is a better version. He just needs the opportunity now. And I think he's going to get that with the Reds in 2024 as the season goes on. And of course, with Pittsburgh, I mean, it's O'Neill Cruz. And I say breakout because as good as that first year was in terms of wetting the appetite for us, we haven't seen what Cruz can really do. A 30-30 season is possible for this player. I'm not quite as high as Welsh is on Cruz. I still think there's a lot of swing and miss. That always bothers me with players, but it's hard not to be excited about the breakout potential. So those are my guys in the National League Central Welsh. Which one stands out to you? Well, uh, O'Neill Cruz, clearly. I will tell you, I did. A, I have a futures bet on him oh. for just season home run totals. I think it's quite low, 24 and a half. I smacked the over, put a couple units on it for a nice little fun uh, season bet to follow. But he's the obvious one. He's like one of my favorite players to follow. Every time he hits a massive homer, I get the tweets and I love it uh, because, uh, you know, he's a guy that I'm drafting and yes, there's strikeout issues, but so it's just like risk reward that's going on here. Mm -hmm. what, what is unique about him is to your point, like we talk so much and we've talked so much about him for like three years or two and a half years. We haven't had a season. We haven't, we haven't had a, a breakout at all. So that's why like he is eligible for this. One of the things I would add, you know, with Churio, uh, I'm fine with Churio. I just, I think there's questions. I've dra I just drafted him in DC actually last night. I think there's just questions on does he struggle and I verse that with his manager, Pat Murphy, who doesn't put up with a lot. Like, I, I don't know if, I don't know how long the leash will be uh, with Pat Murphy. So that's what I worry about. But Michael Bush is probably one of my favorites. He's on my draft list. Uh, I think we had the Welsh draft cheat sheet over on Fantasy Pros, final people doing drafts here. But I love it because they kind of made the commitment to him. They Pushed Pete Crow Armstrong out, who, you know, defensively is a top notch, um, top notch center fielder. Bellinger is going to man that to some degree. He might come over to play some first, but they've got DH and they've got first base for Michael Bush to play around with. I'd also say, I'm not saying they will do this, but it's a possibility if Chris Morrell just absolutely stunk at third base, like that's where Michael Bush was before. So there's some good flexibility. I think he can hit for fine average. Big power numbers are out there. I'm very into the Michael Bush one. I like that one. All right. Uh, so moving on to the West side, let's start with the American League West. Welsh, who do you have here for each of these teams to possibly break out in 2024? All right. So this guy kind of did a breakout, but then faltered on the back half of the year. I'm going to go with the Houston Astros. I'm going to go back to Hunter Brown. I think Hunter Brown gets a s established this year, carries over. His spring has been pretty dang nice. He's actually tapered back the strikeouts. And this is going to be something to watch in season. This is only spring stuff, but he's tapered back the strikeouts in favor of also lower walk numbers. He's only walked two per nine so far. He's had a sub three ERA in spring. Again, spring numbers, blah, blah, blah. But it's been good performances. Hunter Brown, uh, a disciple of Justin Verlander, you know, always uh, there's similarities in that game. Mm -hmm. The consistency, I think, can get locked in this year. This Astro team is a great Astros team. They've got a really good rotation. And Hunter Brown is ready to 
put in a full season. And I think you're going to see that consistency. I think he is going to be a pretty big payoff here. We might be looking at him. We legit might be looking at him as the number two fantasy pitcher from this team. And that does say a lot for the Houston Astros. Uh, moving down to the Seattle Mariners. He is not joining the Splitter Mafia, but he will join this breakout list. We're going to go with Brian Woo. Brian Wu, all the time. Fifth starter seems locked up. What was one of my biggest worries I kept annoyingly talking about was like, I'm a little worried that this team might go out and get Blake Snell. And that might mm -hmm. either A, make Wu kind of a sixth man rotation-y type of guy or make him expendable in general. That wasn't the case. They, they have him, seems committed. He definitely has one of the best fastballs in baseball. It's going to be interesting to see his growth. Because, and my joke, by the way, with the Splitter Mafia was I asked him, was he going to join all those other guys? They tinker Kirby and, mm -hmm. and uh, Gilbert and Bryce Miller. They tinker. They add pitches. Bryce Miller's putting more gyro into his slider and he's doing split fingers. And Wu is just like, he wants to continue doing his thing. Fastball slider, pump the zone. Well, he good. just has know to be who you consistent. Are as a pitcher. You know, I, I mean, yeah. look at remember when the Yankees tried to tell Sonny Gray who he was as a pitcher, how that worked out. And Sonny Gray's like, no, this is not who I am. We said, we don't want you to throw this pitch. And he said, I want to throw this pitch. And he struggled as a Yankee. And then as soon as he left, he was good again. I mean, it was just yeah. crazy. Yeah. Diamondbacks used to do that with teams back in the day. They like wouldn't let him them throw, I think, cutters. And like if yeah. players throw cutters, you don't want to take those completely away. So Brian Wu, I think there's good offensive support. We've talked about uh, good defensive support as well. Ballpark factor. We talked about the Mariners getting in some wins this year. And Brian Wu is going to be pretty sneaky. ADP outside the top uh, 200. I, it's kind of cheap, but he might be like how Bryce Miller was, a skyrocketing player. Mm -hmm. So I think he's lined up for a pretty big breakout. Uh, this is probably the biggest name. This is my version of your O'Neill Cruz, where we roll our eyes and we're like, okay, guys, we get it. You say O'Neill Cruz, I say White Langford. You oh, put Churia yeah. on this as well. Uh, you look at that team. There's guys that are getting opportunities. Justin Foscue could get some opportunities this year. Um, you know, there's a couple other rookies that are kind of floating around that you might you might see more Ezekiel Duran. But White Langford, the breakout is ready. You everybody saw what happened in spring. Tippy top of the home run board. He's been with the majors this entire time. As we're recording this, they just haven't announced where you know him being on the opening day roster. But we're going to get it. We're going to get mm -hmm. it. And Wyatt Langford is going to hit high in the order. He's going to surpass Evan Carter this year to being the more valuable of those guys and probably put himself in as rookie of the year. So because he has not I've never had the chance, he hasn't had a major league at bat in the majors here. The breakout is just going to start from day one. We're going to get Wyatt Langford. Uh, number two, uh, Nolan Sh uh, Shanwell. We struggle with his name. This is a funny one because like he's not being drafted in a lot of spots. And this was the guy that in the same season, within a month, I saw him in his like second pro game in complex ball next to my house in rookie ball. Month later, he's in the major leagues. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He makes tons of great contact, patient hitter, advanced hitter, so much he can get to the majors, but there's been no power to speak of. Bad, hard hit numbers in general, but he's been working on it. We're starting to see that the ball get in the air a little bit more. I'm going to say that he is going to go from one of those guys that we weren't drafting to we're picking up in season and holding because he's going to hit at the tippy top of the lineup, might be leading off. If he can get up to 15 homer power, he's going to make him. It's kind of going to be Yandy Diaz-ish where it's like, you know, they're making tons of contact. Batting average is good. He might be scoring a bunch of runs. He's just got to get a little bit more in the counting stats. I think he's going to be a little bit more aggressive this year. He's ready to break out. And then finally, I'm going to the Oakland, Las Vegas Maybe Utah. I don't know. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to play? There was a rumor that they would play out here in Mesa at Hohokam, their spring training facility. They don't have a place. I don't know where they'll play, but it's going to be with Mason Miller breaking out. Mason Miller, kind of like this Kopech thing. I actually weirdly put two players that are closers in here, but mm -hmm. Mason Miller looks like he's destined for the bullpen. This team is not giving him the commitment to a rotation spot. They want him in the bullpen. There's no reason from day one to not put him in the ninth inning, dropping 101, 102. Could be a devastating closer for this team. He is ready for that breakout. He'll have a full season, but it's going to be about 60 or 70 innings in the bullpen. You might get 25 saves plus. He's being drafted really late. He's going to be a big breakout. His stuff has top 10 closer potential for sure. So Mason Miller will be my pick for the A's. Look, I'm going to keep this simple. <clears throat> of all the players we're going to talk about today in terms of breakout potential, it's Wyatt Langford for me and everybody else. Like, that's how I feel about Langford. Sure. And, and that's and that's including O'Neill Cruz in this conversation. Um, 
Langford is just hitting lasers everywhere. He is just mashing the bar. Now he's so locked in. And it is only spring. And you have to take that with a grain of salt. But it's not like he didn't do it in college. It's not like he didn't do it in the minor leagues. It's not like he hasn't ru- basically just smashed balls everywhere every time he's gotten the opportunity. Like he has gone, he's starting to fly up draft boards, especially towards the end of drafts here. The cost, especially in those salary cap leagues, has gone off the charts almost to the point where it's nearly untenable. But I will say, if you're in more casual leagues and you could be just a little bit more aggressive on him, I'd be very surprised if he did not deliver on the ADP, even if it is more aggressive by two rounds, even three rounds. Like, I, I know that sounds crazy. Like, why do I want to go three rounds above on a player? I'm, if I'm going to go three rounds or maybe even four rounds above on a player, it's Wyatt Langford. And I don't think that's a hot take because I think the potential there for him, especially in this batting order, which could be a very good order when Corey Seager is healthy and what Simeon's done so consistently the last few years, you know, Nate Lowe getting healthier too, hopefully sooner than later. It's a good lineup and Langford being smacked down somewhere in the middle of it, man, like I am very excited about for Langford's potential. All right, National League West, let's wrap things up here. The Dodgers and Gavin Stone. Uh, I would love to put Emmett Sheehan on this list, but Sheehan did struggle last year, except for the very end of the year. Last two starts were good, but I don't want to take too much out of that. He's hurt right now, so it was between those two guys. I'm going to go with Stone because I do think there's going to be opportunities. James Paxton never pitches for a long period of time. Clayton Kershaw is not coming back until August. There's going to be starts available. I mean, Tyler Glass now hasn't exactly been Nolan Ryan in terms of durability in his career. So at some point in time, and we know Yamamoto did not get off to the best start here, potentially. I don't want to overreact to that either. But Stone, I think, as I mentioned earlier, opportunity is what you need for a breakout. I know Welsh has not been in love with this pitcher in the past, but he has certainly proven that he's worthy of the opportunity. And if the Dodgers are anything close to what they can be, Stone's going to have win potential, some quality start potential in there too, if he can get into the sixth inning. So he's an intriguing guy to me with the potential to break out. And it's hard to get on the Dodgers because so many of these guys are already stars. So where are you looking for a guy that isn't a star yet, but could potentially be a breakout? Stone could be that guy. The next guy is starting pitcher Kyle Harrison, who I absolutely have fallen in love with this draft season. Uh, the ADP is great. Harrison is a pitcher right now who has really just been dominant this spring. 11 strikeouts in nine innings, a 1.93 ERA over those nine innings, a 1.17 whip. And Welsh, <clears throat> the giant signing of Blake Snell, I think is such an important thing here because now you're pushing Harrison to the middle of the back end of this rotation. He doesn't have to carry the weight here. You've got Logan Webb. You've got Blake Snell. you got your two horses up front. I think mentally that takes always a lot of pressure off young pitchers and Harrison has been fantastic. So that's a guy that I've been trying to be more aggressive on Jackson Merrill starting for the San Diego Padres opportunity there, talent there. Welsh has gone on and on about Merrill and you know what? He's right. Uh, It's a player that qualifies at shortstop, but he's going to play the outfield. So flexibility is going to be there by the time we turn the page to April into May, Merrill's going to qualify probably both of those spots. That's huge. Good contact guy. Again, where he hits in the order is a matter of how hard, hot he stays. So let's keep that in mind. And the last two are going to be easy here. With Arizona, it's Brandon Fott. He has that potential to be the breakout guy. I don't think he had the breakout last year. I think he showed you the potential last year. This is the year where breakout could be. He's got to find more consistency. Can he carry over what he did last year at the end of the year and in the playoffs? Welsh is confident that he can. I'm confident he can as well. That's going to be huge if they're going to continue to compete with the big boys. And let me tell you, this division is red hot. The Giants are for real. They are in it. They spent money this offseason. Snell is a big addition. It's a huge addition. The Padres, I'm telling you, that Padres rotation is going to be very good. The batting order is still very good. And lastly here, you know, Arizona Diamondbacks, we already know about the Dodgers, but the D-backs are going to be in this. So Fott's going to have to step up his game to compete in this division. And lastly... Ezekiel Tovar, our guy that we've been hyping up here. Welsh has kind of come to my side on this one, which is great for a change. I love this. Tovar was a player who struggled in his first season. He's 21 years old. He's still very young. He has put the work in. I've seen some interviews with him too. Very encouraged about how he handles himself. He was also really recognizing what went wrong for him last year. And I think self-evaluation for young players is something you don't see often. And I'm always excited when a young player says, yeah, you know what? I got to get back to making more hard contact. I got to get back to not striking out, putting the ball in play a little bit. And I've really worked on that this off season and kind of fixing some things that I used to do well in the minor leagues that I kind of got out of whack in the major leagues. And you know what? 
that's the kind of player that's going to have success. He's got power. He plays in Colorado. The stats are going to be, even if he's mediocre, a little bit better than mediocre. I think he's got potential to be really good. One of my favorite late shortstop, especially if you are playing in leagues with middle infielders. So the West looks really good here. Stone, Harrison, Merrill, Fott, and Tovar. Welsh, who stands out to you? Yeah, I think he nailed all of these. These are really good ones. Uh, obviously, you know, I think Merrill, Merrill's been one I've been preaching for quite some time, and he did make the opening day roster, and he did, you did get to see a few hits, which was really wild. I mean, people are going to get to see the, this is the guy, big plate presence. Hopefully he doesn't become like Nolan Shanwell last year, where it's just a bunch right. of contact and nothing else, but he's got the opportunity to move up in that lineup. And then Brandon Fott is one that, you know, listen, a, a homer, whatever it is, he was phenomenal in, um, in the World Series and in the playoffs. And I do hope that that's going to carry over. I think he's got a lot of the tools for that to carry over. Full workload of being a major leaguer in camps this year. I think he's in line for a big one. And both of the costs are really great. So Jackson, Maryland, Brandon fought probably my favorite breakouts that you put on the NL West. My division. Mine. There you go. And you know who I also could throw out there is an extra credit on in uh uh, who's had a really good spring too. I know Cross was just talking about him also, is Luis Matos in this division too. That's yeah. another guy too who, uh, again, like don't forget about these guys. Like Jordan Walker, we love Jordan Walker. Oh, he doesn't become what we want him in the year one. Uh, we throw him away. Don't throw away these guys. Matos is another guy having a great spring. Pay I attention. I almost picked him, but Harrison's been so good and pitching is, you know, so hard to find. And I think that's the way, but here's an extra credit one. But we want to hear from you. Who are the potential breakouts that you love in 2024? comment below on this video and by the way i just realized at the end of the show we're we matched today we both wore our fantasy we did yeah we got the fantasy look at that i went blue you went black black and blue because we're beat up from the spring training we just want the season to start subscribe to fantasy bros mlb join us opening day leading off live joey p will have hair it won't be my hair but it will be hair thanks to all of you who support the channel here we love you guys and gals who support us here and join our discord fantasybros.com slash chat Fun things are going to be happening. We're going to announce that on the opening day of leading off. Real baseball is already happening, sort of, kind of, but the season really begins on Thursday. So be a part of leading off live every single Monday through Friday, 1230 Eastern. Make sure you ring that bell for notifications because we've got the waiver wire videos coming back. we got the trade videos coming back. we got the short form stuff, the long form stuff, leading off. Welsh, it's going to be a beautiful season. I'm excited for it. I'm stoked. I'm ready to go. I'm stoked. I'm glad. For, I'm hoping everybody's going to be joining us. You uh, subscribe at YouTube.com. If you're listening on the podcast slash fantasy pros, MLB, the mm-hmm. podcast offering will always still be there. Make sure you guys are locked in. Cause we, we are locked in big time. And, and some more podcast offerings too from the audio yep. slide that we're going to be using. So uh, a lot going on here. Fantasy pros, MLB, we're expanding the coverage because of our fan base as you continue to expand too. So we're very excited to be a part of this and in this thing together. So sync your leagues over there at Fantasy Pros. Use my playbook again, fantasypros.com slash uh, fantasypros.com slash MLB, my playbook. That's how you sync all your leagues for free and get the best tools on the planet because guess what? The season has begun. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for the Welsh. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Break out. Peace.